Daphne here from Steam Design Lab with part 2 of the Paper and Plastic Bead Skeleton Marionette Project. In this video, I'll show you how to add the face and rib details and how to add the string controls to your marionette. These are the supplies you'll need for this part of the project. And these are the tools. We will start by attaching beads to create a tab at each point where the strings will attach to the skeleton. A glue gun is the quickest way to do this. The first two tabs will be added at the top of both lower legs. In order to make sure the legs have a little more room to move independently, I glue the top hip beads toward the outer edges of the pelvic bone. Then you'll need to add tabs to the right and left sides of the skull, or head. They go just about where the ears would be. You need one tab on each side to keep the head from spinning around too much. I ended up swapping these beads out for smaller clear beads because I wasn't crazy about how they looked. You'll need to add just one bead at the top center of the skeleton's back. The arms will be controlled at the hands. Add one bead on the side of each hand. Place them toward the round end and they'll almost look like they could be thumbs. It's a good idea to add any final details before adding the strings. I'm adding the teeth by drawing them onto a piece of paper, then gluing the paper into the space behind the jawbone. It was a little tricky to get the paper in there just right. Next time I might just draw the teeth directly onto the ball. For the eye and nose cavities, start by sketching them on with pencil. The lines can easily be erased if needed. Then. Fill in the areas using permanent black marker. You could also use acrylic paint here. For the ribs, you can again start with a pencil sketch and fill in the spaces with black marker or paint.
the strings are probably the most challenging part of this project. Not because they are complicated, they can just be a little hard to manage. Start by tying a string to each of the seven control tabs we added. Each string should be about 30 inches long to start. Once all seven strings are attached, you can move on to the next step. You could simply use unsharpened wood pencils as the controls for this project, but I wanted to wrap my pencils in a sheet of paper to make them look a little cleaner. Start by applying a piece of clear tape along one of the short edges of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Then, center the pencil on the opposite edge and carefully roll the paper around the pencil. When you get to the end, press the tape to seal the edge. You'll need four of these. Lay your skeleton down and separate the strings. With a piece of low tack painters or masking tape, tape your skeleton around the body to the work surface. You'll also need this tape to temporarily hold the strings to the controls. I cut seven small slivers of tape and placed them on the edge of the table so that they'd be ready to go. Now you can attach the strings to the controls. Start with the arm strings. Measure from the tab along the string and place a sliver of tape on the string at the 20 inch mark. Do the same thing for the other arm. Then take one of the wrap pencils and transfer the piece of tape with the string attached to the top edge. Do the same thing for the other side. For the legs, you'll want to place the sliver of tape at the 23 inch mark for both sides. Take another control rod and again transfer the tape to the rod. Do the same thing for the string on the skeleton's back, this time measuring from the tab to the 19 inch mark. Attach the tape with the string to one end of the third control rod. Repeat the process for the strings on either side of the skeleton skull, measuring to 17 inches. Attach the strings to the last control rod.
Now you'll need to place the control rod that is attached to the skull crosswise on top of the rod that has the string to the skeleton's back. I'm using a rubber band to attach them, but a metal twist tie would be a lot easier. Once the rods are connected, adjust the control rods so that the tape is facing the top. Time to check to make sure the strings are the correct lengths. You want to make sure that when you hold the cross control rods parallel to the ground, the strings to the head and back are all straight and tight. Do the same thing to check the control rod for the legs. And then check the rod for the arms. Now you'll need to adjust the position of the strings from side to side on the control rods. Wrap the string two or three times around and tack it into place using a dot of hot glue. I'm starting with the cross control rods and then I'll do the legs and finally the arms. I'll slow it down and show you a closer view of this process when I get to the arms. Flip the cross rods over and add some glue where they come together to secure them. I decide to move the tape that is securing the legs to the control in toward the center so that the strings won't interfere with the arm strings. I adjust the tape so that the strings are about three inches in from each end. Once that's done, it's time to glue the leg control onto the main control. Add some hot glue and line up the leg rod with the one that supports the skull. Here's where you get a better view of the gluing process. First, I'll measure and adjust the position of the tape. For the arms, I want to be about an inch and a half from each end. Wrap the short end of the string around the rod about three times, then add a bead of hot glue to secure it. Trim the extra string and it's done.
Your marionette is done. If you enjoyed this project, please give it a thumbs up. For more information, including a printable transcript and layout drawings, check out our website at steamdesignlab.com.